Hi, I'm going to talk about the rules of probability and how to apply them in genetics. These, by the way, show up on AP Biology exam formula sheet. Let's get started. So the rule number one is the rule of multiplication. So that means events A and B are independent of each other. So they basically occur in the sequence. And the key word to look for is the word and. So we want to calculate the probability for event A and the probability for event B and then to find the probability of these two events happening we would have to multiply. Now another rule is the rule of addition. So we have event A and event B being mutually exclusive. So it means we're going to be looking for the word or. We're looking for probability A and then we're going to find probability B and then what we're looking for here is what's the probability for event A or B happening. Okay, so let's take a look at specific examples so that we know um, how to use this. So example number one is this. You have a couple that has four children and the question is what's the probability that all of them will be girls? Okay, so the first thing that you want to ask yourself is this. If the couple has one child, what's the probability that they have a girl? So the answer is going to be 50%. 50% boy, 50% girl. So we're going to say one half. So now we have a couple that has four children. So they have a girl and another girl and another girl and another girl and so forth. So it means we have to apply the rule of multiplication. So we're going to multiply one half, one half, one half one half and then the probability that all of them will be girls is going to be one sixteenth that's the answer so here's another question so problem number two so we have um, a cross between the following genotype and this one and this one and then the pro what is the probability that the offspring is going to have the following genotype Okay, so you can see this would be a tri-hybrid cross and it would take you a long time to complete it. And so what we want to do, we want to simply ask, uh, answer the question because we're only looking for this genotype, so the probabilities. So I'm going to go on and make some room here so that I can write it out. So basically what we have here is this. We have this genotype and uh, big C, little c three sets of traits and another individual was big A little a big B big B and big C big C so what we want to do here we want to approach this individually looking at these individual traits one at a time so what we see here is that the first parent is offering big A little a and the other parent is offering big A little a so if we do a tiny mini mini uh, Punnett square, which is a monohybrid cross, you're going to see immediately that big A, little a cross with big A, little a. If you do the cross, remember how to do this, right? This is very simple, simple genetics. So we get a, a, little a, a, and so you can see that 25% will be big A, big A, 50% will be big A little a and 25% will be little a little a. So what we're looking for, particular genotype that we're looking for here is this. Let me rewrite that here. So it means we only need this. So what would be the probability of getting big A little a from this cross? Um, the answer is going to be, uh, hang on. Okay, so Going back to our tiny little Punnett square, notice if we cross big A little a and big A little a, we get 50% chance for big A little a. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to put that into fractions and we say the probability of getting big A little a is going to be one half. So now we're going to approach the next set of genes. So we've got big B, little b, and another parent is offering big B, big B. So let's do a tiny little cross. Here it is. And then you're going to see, and I'm going to do the shortcut here. You're going to see that half of them are going to be homozygous and half will be heterozygous. Do you see? So it means the probability of getting big B, little b is also going to be one half. And then the next set of traits that's represented by the C's 
we'll do the same thing. Except this time we can see that the pattern is, ex is, is exactly the same, so I'm not going to rewrite anything. We're just going to say, oh, okay, here it is. There's our answer. So it means another one half. So now we want these traits in that genotype, representing genotype all in one. So we want A's and we want B's and C's. So they're and, and, and. So it means we have to multiply them all and we are going to get one out of eight. That is our answer. That's the probability of getting this particular genotype. See how much faster this was? So the next problem is going to be problem number three. And notice we've got a cross between this genotype and this genotype. And then we are looking for the following. Except this time, so you're going to use the same method as I did before. Okay, you're going to solve for this genotype and then separately you're going to solve for this genotype. But notice that in this situation, we are looking for either or. So we have the word or. So it means you're going to have to add them up eventually. So you're going to add those fractions back together. And actually what you're going to get, and I'm going to tell you what the answer is so that way you can check it. You're going to see that the probability of getting the first genotype is 1 out of 16. And the probability of getting the second genotype is also 1 out of 16. And when you add them up, you'll get 2 out of 16. And then you simplify them and your answer is going to be 1 out of 8 also. So pause this video, give it a try, and see if you actually get this answer. This answer. But um, the method that you're going to follow is right here that I showed you on the previous slide. Okay, so the next problem is number 4. We have a guinea pig. That's black guinea pig represented by big B little b and is crossed with white guinea pig little b little b. And we want to know what is the probability of the first two offspring being white. So first one is white and the second one is white. So what you do first, you have to find what the probability is for a white offspring to begin with. So we're going to cross big B little b with another with a white, which is little b, little b. And once you do the cross, you're going to see that the probability for little b, little b is actually one half. So now how do we get two white offspring in a row? So it means we're going to take one half, multiply one half, and what we're going to get is one fourth. So that's the probability for two offspring being white. Okay, problem number five. Now we have heterozygous black guinea pigs that are crossed among themselves. So it means we are crossing heterozygous. Okay, and what we're going to get here is these combinations of genotypes. So we get big B, big B, big B, little B, little B, little B. So you're going to see these guys are going to be all black. Black is dominant. And that's three out of four. And then this genotype is... Uh, the phenotype will be white, so it's 1 out of 4. So now what we want to do is figure out the probability of the first three offspring being in this pattern, black, white, black, and then or white, black, white. So what we want to do is find these separately, okay, and then we're going to have to obviously add them because we have the word or. So... Let me just erase that quickly. Here you go. So black, the probability for black is going to be 3 out of 4. White, 1 out of 4. Black, 3 out of 4. So we want this pattern. We want black and white and black. So it means we are multiplying. And what we're going to get here is 9 out of 64 chances of them showing up in this pattern. And then you do the same thing here, except this white is going to be now 1 out of 4, black is 3 out of 4, white is 1 out of 4. So you multiply these and you're going to get 3 out of 64. So now we want only one of these patterns. So we're looking for the probability either this, 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 or the other one. So we've got the word or. So it means we have to add these fractions. So you add them up. You're going to get 12 
out of 64 and then simplify that to 3 out of 16 and that is going to be your answer.